So, what class should you choose in Elder Scrolls Online? In this video, I'm going to touch on what the foundations of each class are, what makes them tick, what kind of playstyle they have, how powerful they are, and are they garbage? What are their strengths and their weaknesses? Will people want to play with you or will they want to vote kick you out of the party? These are all questions I always have when I step into a new MMO, so let's get them answered so you can confidently pick the class that's right for you. I'll also showcase some of their more important skills as well as their ultimates so that you know which classes have an aesthetic that looks cool to you. And as always, if you find my videos helpful, be sure to hit that sub and bell notification button so that you can be alerted when I post more ESO content. And a massive shout out to my YouTube members, thanks for keeping the channel going. Let's begin. First, let's discuss the Dragonite. The Dragonite excels at the use of damage over time abilities. Specifically, using fire and poison dots, it ends up having some of the best AoE potential in the game. These dots make the Dragonite a respectable damage dealer for solo and group content. Not only that, but it has easy access to multiple crowd control abilities. It can chain enemies in. It can talons them down so they can't move. It can also turn an enemy into stone, preventing them from moving yet again. These built-in crowd control abilities definitely contribute to their nearly unrivaled success as tanks in PvE content. It will take a lot to dethrone them as as the meta choice for tank in Elder Scrolls Online, and we might be seeing that happen now, not because they're bad tanks, but because they are currently such good DPS, and so groups will sometimes want to choose to slot them as a DPS instead of a tank. On the topic of crowd control and damage mitigation abilities, these are two parts of what made Dragonite so successful in PvP. Dragonites have always been one of the favorite PvP classes in ESO. And of course, we can't talk about the class without mentioning its most defining set of abilities, its ultimates. Just like all classes in ESO, the Dragonite has three ultimates. The first ultimate allows the Dragonite to leap at its enemies, damaging them and stunning them. This ability is primarily used in PvP as a way to knock back and knock down your enemies while restoring your resources. This knockback effect is not desirable in PvE as it spreads the enemies out, making them harder to group up and kill. So PvE Dragonites will usually choose the next ultimate. The second ultimate allows the Dragonites to throw down a standard, which will burn nearby enemies while increasing the Dragonites' damage as long as they are standing within it. Simultaneously, it reduces the damage the Dragonites take while standing within it. This is the primary ultimate Dragonite damage dealers will use in solo and group PvE content. Finally, the Molten Armor ultimate allows the Dragonite to harden its skin to the point at which it takes almost no damage for a short duration. This ultimate is most commonly used by the tanks as a sort of get out of jail free card when they run out of resources or when they really need to survive a huge burst of damage. Okay, now let's look at the report card for the Dragonite. Here's where I would place the Dragonite on the tier list. For all of the classes, I'm going to rank them S tier being the best and C tier being the worst. But remember, every class can do all content on every role. Some might be a little easier than others, but all of them are capable of doing all content in the game. For the damage dealer right now, the Dragonite is S tier. As a tank, it is also S tier. But as a healer, the Dragonite is currently C tier. While Dragonites make best in slot damage dealers and tanks right now, I'd be lying if I said it was common to see a group that wanted one to heal them. The next class we'll go over is the Necromancer. The Necromancer was added to the game with the Elsewhere expansion, making it the newest class in the game. And it does a lot of what you might expect, but perhaps not the way you expect it to. As a Necromancer, you will be, you guessed it, raising the dead. But what will they do once risen? Well, that depends. Some might heal you, some might explode. Let's look at the skills. Your blast bones will slowly rise from the ground before leaping at your enemies and exploding, doing a ton of area of effect damage to all enemies near the target. It acts as a sort of delayed explosion and it's the hardest hitting ability in the Necromancer arsenal. You know how to spot a Necromancer DPS? They will have this skill slotted on their bar 100% of the time. Necromancers can also shoot magical skulls at their enemies and summon elemental archers or skeletal mages to assist them in battle. They can even summon a spirit to heal them. Beyond that, the Necromancer also has access to the Bone Tyrant skill line, which allows them to use magic to wrap itself in bone armor, reducing incoming damage or summoning a bone totem to scare and crowd control enemies. As for the Necromancer ultimates, well, let's start with its offensive ultimate. This is the one it's probably the most known for, and the one that will ensure it's always welcome in any trial group. That ultimate is the Colossus. This undead beast is summoned from underground to rise forth and pummel your enemies. Not only does it unleash a ton of damage, but it also places a debuff on the enemies, causing them to take more damage from everybody in your group. Recently, a set was added to the game that provides the same debuff, which can sometimes mean the Necro can choose a weapon ultimate instead of its Colossus. The next ultimate is the Bone Goliath, where the Necro 
Necromancer can transform, gaining an enormous amount of health and becoming nearly unkillable for 20 seconds. Necromancer tanks and necromancers in PvP can pop this ultimate anytime their life's in danger, and it's almost a surefire way to escape death. After all, they can't raise the dead if they're among them. The final Necromancer ult has the ability to resurrect up to three dead party members, sapping victory back from the jaws of defeat. It's always exciting when you think all is lost only to have the entire group resurrected by the last member standing. How would I rate the Necromancer in the following roles? Well, as a damage dealer, it's S tier. As a tank, S tier again. And as a healer, S tier. Yes, the Necromancer being the newest class in the game is also the most well-rounded. It handles all three roles superbly, and I've been in groups and all difficulties of content with the Necromancer in all three roles. The next up, we have the Nightblade. The Nightblade is the Elder Scrolls Online's rogue or assassin class, the master of the shadows and blood magic. It excels in stealth and surprise attacks, and as a result, the Nightblade has some of the best burst damage in the game. The Nightblade's use of blood magic allows them to constantly leech life from their enemies, back to themselves. One example is their ability called Swallow Soul, which simultaneously damages the enemy and heals the Nightblade. This ability does nearly as much damage as other similar skills, but with the added benefit of topping off your health every time you use it. Another noteworthy ability is the fact that they can summon a shadow to fight by their side in combat. It fits their aesthetic perfectly and it deals great damage. Then there's the Assassin's Blade, which is an execute ability, meaning it hits incredibly hard when the enemy is in low health. This is great for finishing off bosses who are most dangerous when they're nearing death, and that's most bosses. The first Nightblade ultimate allows them to leap at the enemy, dealing a ton of damage and debuffing them, causing them to take 20% extra damage from you for the next six seconds. Generally, Nightblades will use this at the beginning of a burst combo to boost that burst damage by 20%. The second Nightblade ultimate, Consuming Darkness, will slow all nearby enemies by 70% and cause you to take 10% less damage for a time. This can be useful for tanks as a way to mitigate large amounts of incoming damage or in PvP. The final Nightblade ultimate is called Soul Shred and it will deal damage to all enemies around you and stun them for four seconds. This can be useful in both PvE and PvP as a great way to do damage damage and stun your enemies. Nightblades are popular choices among damage dealers and solo players due to their great damage output and their ability to survive. They also have quite a bit of built-in sustain which helps prevent them from running out of resources so easily in the heat of battle. And thanks to their skills and passives they can regenerate their ultimate rapidly so that it's always ready when they need it. Unfortunately for Nightblade damage dealers, they flew a little too close to the sun for a little too long and were recently knocked down a peg in that department. For that reason, I'll rank them as such. As a damage dealer, they're A tier. As a tank, B tier, and as a healer, C tier. Next up, we have the Sorcerer. The Sorcerer is the closest thing to the mage archetype in Elder Scrolls Online. It hurls elemental damage at enemies, and it looks good doing it. Sorcerers are also the closest thing to a summoner in ESO. They can have two pets active 100% of the time, and a third pet with their ultimate. They can go a step further and wear armor that allows them to temporarily summon a fourth pet. The two permanent pets are Daedric Summons that aid them in battle. These pets can do quite a bit of damage while also helping to take some of the hits for the Sorcerer. Beyond that, they can buff and heal the Sorcerer, making them incredibly useful. The Sorcerer primarily deals in Lightning and Wind for its abilities, dealing a ton of AoE damage in the process. The Sorcerer is currently the only class with the ability to teleport anywhere at once, making it nearly unrivaled when it comes to mobility on the battlefield. This teleport won't see much use in PvE content, but it's very effective in PvP content, and it also stuns enemies as you leap around. Combine all of that with their ability to wrap themselves inside a literal storm to mitigate incoming damage, and you have an incredibly well-rounded class that can put out a ton of damage without being too squishy. Now, what about their ultimates? How do they stack up? The Sorcerer's first ultimate is Negate Magic, which stuns enemies and removes any enemy AoE abilities in the area. This is great for crowd control and removing harmful ground effects. The second ultimate is Summon Storm Atronach, which will do exactly that. Summon a Storm Atronach. The Storm Atronach ultimate is one of, if not the hardest hitting single target ultimate in the entire game. The final ultimate is called Overload, and it turns your light and heavy attacks into bolts of lightning so you can be the guy on the battlefield screaming lightning bolt. Sorcerers are currently very popular choices for damage dealers and are very new player friendly. They have a passive heal over time ability built into crit surge, which makes them incredibly fun to solo on. Some would argue that the Sorcerer is the easiest class to play, thanks to its passive damage from its pets and its easy access to passive healing. Here's how I would rank the Sorcerer on the tier list in each role. Damage dealer, S tier. Tank, B. Healer, A tier.
Next, we have the Templar. The Templar will wield the power of light and use it to eliminate its enemies. The Templar is the master of efficiency. It is without a doubt the easiest class to play, but it achieves this without giving up an ounce of power. For this reason, the class is perfect for beginners and veterans alike. The heart of the damage dealing Templar lies with its puncturing sweeps. It turns light into a spear and melts its enemies with this ability. Combined with the right gear, this ability can be used repeatedly to great effect, giving the Templar the simplest and most effective rotation in the game. Don't for a second think that just because the rotation is easy means it's doing less damage. No, the Templar still hits like a truck. Beyond this, the Templar is known for its fantastic ability to heal its allies, with perhaps the strongest burst heal in the game. If you're looking to become a healer for group content, you can't go wrong with the Templar. Templars have a great gap closer that allows them to leap at their enemies, knocking them over, or if they'd rather, they can just throw their spear at their enemy to knock them down that way. As you can see, the Templar has a diverse arsenal of abilities, allowing them to deal a lot of damage and heal really well. But what about their ultimates? The first Templar ultimate is Radial Sweep, where the Templar swings the Spear of Light over their head, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. This is a great AoE damage ability that can be very useful in both PvE and PvP. This is a great option for DPS Templars. The second Templar ultimate is Nova, where the Templar throws down a Nova into the battlefield, damaging and debuffing enemies caught within. This ability is great for debuffing bosses when they're about to do high damage mechanic, helping to prevent the boss from killing your allies. This ultimate is a situationally great option for healing. Finally, the last ultimate is Rite of Passage, where the Templar channels out massive heals to allies nearby. This is an incredibly strong heal that makes it very difficult for any of your nearby allies to die. This can be used to great effect in both PvP and PvE content. This ultimate is also a great option for healers. The Templar is in a great spot right now, and perhaps the only place I didn't see it used all that much was in the role of the tank. This is until recent changes that made it a decent tank after all. For that reason, I'll give it the following score. Damage Dealer S tier. Tank. A tier, and healer, S tier. Now for the final class, the Warden. The Warden will summon companions to help defeat its enemies. It will use ice to protect itself and it will use nature to heal. The Warden was the first class added to the game post-launch during the Morrowind chapter expansion. The Warden is an incredibly well-rounded class, making it great at any role. As for its first skill line, it will summon companions to aid it in its destruction. You can hurl cliff divers at your enemies or summon a Betty to buff you. You can call wings to increase your movement speed. The hardest hitting ability on the list is going to be your subterranean assault, which will cause beetles to burrow underground and then resurface, dealing huge damage to the enemies nearby. The Winner's Embrace skill line is filled with some great ice abilities. These abilities can be used to slow and damage enemies, or you can choose more defensive options and wrap yourself in ice to mitigate incoming damage. Finally, the Green Balance skill line is where many of your healing abilities are tucked away. These abilities and passives are one of the reasons you will almost never see a trial group without a Warden healer on the roster. But perhaps most important to their contribution as a healer is that Wardens have a buff that causes them to give their party members 10% additional max health anytime they heal them. So let's talk about the Warden's ultimates. The first ultimate, known as Feral Guardian, this ultimate summons a bear to aid you in combat. This is a permanent summon and is why the Warden is the second closest thing to a summoner class in Elder Scrolls Online. The surprising thing about the bear is how much damage it puts out, and the fact that when its enemies are low health, it puts out even more damage. This is a great ultimate for Wardens who want to take on the role of damage dealer. The next ultimate is Sleet Storm. This ultimate looks amazing and uses cold damage to slow and damage all nearby enemies. It only puts out a moderate amount of damage, but the slowing and freezing effect of this ultimate can make it really handy in some PvP and PvE situations. The last ultimate is Secluded Grove, which is an enormous AoE heal that will quickly heal any party members within. This is great when your party has a lot of incoming damage and you're falling behind on your heals. In summary, the Warden is one of the most capable classes in the game, performing very well in every role, and for this reason I'm going to place it in the following tiers for each role. As a damage dealer, the Warden gets an A. As a tank, S tier. And as a healer, S tier. There's one thing that's important to know. Every class brings a unique buff that it can provide to the entire group. For this reason, endgame groups will typically make sure that they have at least one of every class in their group. There are 12 people in a trial group, so this leaves room for one of each class, and then there's six additional spots to spare. So no matter which class you choose, you will be useful. So there you have it, guys. Which class do you think has the coolest aesthetic? Which one do you want to play first? or which one have you already been playing? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a ton. And if you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves ESO, swing by my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash luckyghost. In the description and in the comments down below, I'll provide links to written tier lists for solo and group content. So be sure to look at that if you want a quick recap of what you saw here. I hope you have a fantastic day, night, or evening, wherever you might be, and I'll see you in the next video.